uh negotiating to earn more commission negotiating to earn more commission who wants to earn more commission just by a show of hands who wants to be able to go out there and meet with clients and get paid what you are worth Fair. right who wants to consistently increase their commissions over time right like if you're averaging just as an example right commissions are negotiable that's a disclaimer this is being recorded um if you're averaging two percent on your deals but now you're able to take all your deals to three percent what's going to happen to your income it's going to go up right and so i do want to remind everybody that there are many many ways to earn more commissions to make more money in real estate um one of the ways is charging more and earning more commission keeping more commission negotiating so that you retain more of your commission it's not just closing more deals right like if you close 10 transactions in a year and your average commission is two percent on each deal right versus you increase your skill set you increase your value you go through some of these tactics and now you're averaging three percent on each deal and you close the same amount of deals you now got who knows math? How much of an increase was that in, in your pay percentage going from two to three percent? Jason, what is it, Dan? 50%. 50% increase in commission. A 50% increase in commission, right? So hear me out, guys, right? Because some of some people think like, hey, I want to earn more commission, so I got to go negotiate with my broker and ask them to give me a higher split. And sometimes you're, you're, let's say you do get a higher split, it's not 50% more, right? Because the pie is only so much, right? So that's, that's only a part of the equation, right? Yeah, if you close 10 deals at a 50% split and now you're at a 60% split, yeah, it went up. But what's going to be even more impactful is if you increase your commission per deal right how much you make per each deal because going from an average of two percent to an average of three percent that's a 50 percent commission that's a lot more than the five or ten percent you got more on your split with your broker right so i want you guys to keep that in mind right if you want to make more money it's a combination of things you can close more transactions you can increase your price point right you can earn more per deal you can Try to get a higher commission split with your broker you can also get more referrals from your clients right so that you're generating more referral business and repeat business but when you do all of those and you combine a little bit of each that's where your income goes like through the roof just imagine like okay this year i closed 10 deals but next year i closed 20 deals right because i right and then i also increased my average commission from two percent to two and a half so on those 20 deals i got half percent more right and then maybe now because my production's higher i'm getting a higher commission split maybe that went up by five or ten percent right and then now i moved my price point up i was typically working with first-time buyers at a million now i'm doing listings and i'm doing you know referral buyers and i'm at 1.5 million is my average price point and so when you add all those up guys like your commission is going to go through the roof right your commissions that you earn and so Part of it is being able to negotiate and earn more commission when you're working with clients, which is what we're gonna talk about today. So I'm not here today to talk about like how to do the buyer presentation, how to do the listing presentation, anything like that. I really wanna dive a little bit deep into the mindset and the strategies um, that you need to have as a business owner so that you can negotiate and earn more commissions. Because if you don't understand how this stuff works, it's not like a secret script that I'm gonna tell you and then all of a sudden like, you're getting paid more that's not that's not what it is right it's really understanding how it all works that will allow you to make certain decisions within your business you guys follow me yep. okay so that's why i told you guys today this is a little bit higher level right it's not supposed to be tricks or anything like that so pay attention take some notes and and take something from it um okay mindset let's talk about the mindset so here's one concept right i want you guys to understand and retain in the absence of value, price always wins. What does that mean, guys? It means if you don't provide a value to that to your potential client, 
they're going to ask for like a, a price reduction. Exactly. Right. If you're not providing enough value to your client where they see this as a big value, then by default, it's always about the price and who's going to charge less. Give you an example. I go to Jason. He's a realtor to help me buy my home. I go to Dan, right? I interview both of them. Jason is providing like a ton of value because his skills are there, his track record, his presentation, he prepared, he has it all broken down. He explains it to me. He's really thorough. He goes through A through Z, like kills it, crushes it with the service, the presentation. And he's charging 2%. Let's just say that, right? An example. I go to Dan and Dan um, gives the same level of service, right? Same exact presentation. They're like neck and neck, but Dan's charging one and a half. Where's more value? The one and a half, right? Because he's cheaper, but he's giving me the same, right? Now let's create another scenario, right? You go to Jason and Jason kills it, crushes it. He's charging uh, two and a half percent. I go to Dan. Dan does a terrible job, right? He's not really good, not really prepared. This is just the made up Dan, not this Dan, right? He's charging 2%, right? He's cheaper. But when I compare the two, I'm like, I know I'm going to get way more with Jason. So who would I rather go with? No. <laughs> I'd rather go with Jason, right? Because this is the big purchase for me, right? Even though Jason's a little bit more, he's two and a half percent. But because I see the value in Jason, I see everything that he's done and what he's going to give me. I'd rather go with Jason, even though he's a little bit more. And so when there's no value, guys, that you're bringing to the table, this is the first thing that we're talking about, because this is going to set the precedence for everything else, right? If you're not providing value, you're not doing a good job, you're not showing up prepared, you're not taking the time to really help the client. It's going to always come down the price and so when people are shopping around they'll go for the cheaper person if you're not bringing value even though you may know like hey i'm the better agent i know i'm going to do a better job that agent sucks but hey maybe you didn't demonstrate your value and maybe they saw that your price was a little bit more but the value wasn't there so therefore i went with in my mind the default right you guys follow me there um, has anybody ever paid more for something when they could have gotten it a little bit less? Give me an example. I have an example. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is this is totally off the subject, but I was buying tools at Harbor Freight, like a cutting wheel. Cool. A tool. Uh, and it was like some cheap stuff from Harbor Freight. Yeah. And it didn't last that long because I was cutting metal, right? So I was like, man, forget this. I'm going to go get a Dremel one. It's like the best. Yeah. But it was like ten times more expensive. Ten times more. Because it lasts longer. Okay. So you went to Harbor Freight. You paid ten times more for a tool that you probably could have got cheaper. But because you knew that tool was going to do the job better, faster, was more valuable, you were willing to pay more than maybe like buying a cheaper tool, which you probably could have got the job done, but it would have taken a lot longer and it would have been a lot more headache and stress, right? And so what we got to ask ourselves is which tool are we? Are we the one that Dan described is the one he paid 10 times more for? Or are we the cheaper alternative version that's not going to do as good of a job? And you got to decide who you want to be as well, right? Because you could be the cheap guy. Like, don't get me wrong. There are companies out there, which we all know them, the discount brokers, and their whole value is what? Cost. I'm cheaper. I'm cheaper, guys. Go with me. So what they try to do is they try to make up volume, but they make a lot less per deal. We see it all the time, guys, your discount brokers, your rebate brokers, your 1% listing agents, whatever that that's their advertisement. Their whole advertisement is let me find the people who just want cheaper. And like, I'll probably do more sales, but if you were to calculate the numbers, even though it looks like they're closing a lot of sales, like do the math, like they're only getting 1% on the deal and they're paying for all these things. They're making a lot less, but, but they're the top producer, right? <laughs> they close a lot of transactions. I don't know. For me, I'd rather be the best at what I do and charge more and get paid more and work with clients who really want to want value from me. Because those same clients that are willing to go with cheaper are the ones that are going to leave you for someone else that's even cheaper, right? Like it's called the race to the bottom, right? In the race to the bottom, everybody loses. When you're just trying to be the cheaper and the cheaper and the cheaper and the cheaper, 
you lose, right? Because you earn less. Um, any questions? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, obviously value, I think is number one, but I think, and I don't know if Enrique probably has this in a slide, but I also think it's important how you make the client feel. Yeah. Right? How, how you make them feel, because value is one thing, right? I mean, I, I can present something, Blanca can present something, but I guarantee you the way she's going to make you feel is probably going to be better than me at certain times, right? If I don't come in with that mindset of, hey, yeah, I, I know the skills, I know exactly what Blanca's doing, but Blanca's going to go ahead and they're going to connect with the client. And I mm. think that's extremely important in, in, in this process. Well, what you're describing, though, is that's still part of value. Yeah. right how i make you feel is part of the value package right so value was just this one big thing value is comprised of knowledge service rapport how i make you feel it's called perceived value right when i interact with blanca i'm looking at the big picture of blanca what did she bring to the table what was her personality how did she service me how did she make me feel was she knowledgeable all those things combined create how much value points i give to blanca right and so if, if Blanca has a value score in my mind of 100, and then I go to Jason and his value score is 75, I'm gonna go with Blanca, right? Maybe like he said everything Blanca said, like he had all the tools, but she made me feel better, right? Because like she was really careful with me and she really was thorough and patient and all those things. So that gave me the extra 25 points, which is why I score her 100, right? But I only scored J Jason 75, because he was just trying to rush and trying to close the deal and not really be patient with me. And I was looking for patience, right? And so it's er all of those things combined equal value, right? Okay, next concept, guys. Business owners make business decisions. You have to remember that you are a business owner, right? Yes, we're real estate sales people. Yes, we have a license. Yes, we sell houses. But at the end of the day, you guys are independent contractors and you run a business, right? And so it is your business decision on what you want to charge and what you want your business to look like. My job as your coach, leader, trainer is to try to help you build that business as big as possible. But at the end of the day, you got to make business decisions as well, right? Like for one agent, um, maybe they're okay with making 10 grand on a deal right but for someone that has like 50 grand a month in expenses maybe 10 grand on a deal is not enough like i want to go after bigger deals because like i need to make more right maybe someone's okay with doing a deal for a three thousand dollar paycheck at the end of the day i don't know that's up to you guys right and so the big exercise you got to do is what is the minimum amount that you need to make for this deal to make business sense because if you don't know that number or you've never even thought about that number until this conversation today, and you're just kind of going with the flow, you're not really being intentional, right? And for you to really crush it in your business, you have to be highly, highly intentional. Everything you do should be calculated, right? Because the more calculated you could be, you're not just guessing, right? So I want you guys all to write a number down, right? What's the minimum net income? Meaning after all expenses, splits, whatever, you walk home with this check, what's the minimum that you need to walk away with for it to be, okay, I'm good with this deal at a bare minimum. Everyone take five seconds to write that down. Doesn't have to be exact, right? Like I don't want you to sit here and do a crazy, but just what comes to your mind, right? Everyone got a number? You got a number in your head? You write a number down? Okay, now I want you to ask and hold that number, right? The only way you're going to give yourself a pay raise is if you start increasing that number. Let me give you an example. When I first started in the business, right, we were doing loans and stuff like that back in 03, 04. Back then, my number was like three grand. That was a number that I came up with. Like, I'll do this deal, you know, because clients were shopping. We were doing more mortgages when we first started. Clients were shopping on rates and all that stuff. And you know, depending on what rate they got and what you charge, like, you know, you can play around with the commission. It's just like what we charge for clients. So for me, I was like really calculated, like, okay, if I close five deals a month, right. And I make at least three grand on each deal, that's 15 grand a month. I'm good with that. Like at the bare minimum, do I want to make a hundred grand a month? Hell yeah. But if I make at least 15 a month, back then with my expenses and what I got, and I was younger, obviously, 
that was a lot of money for me. And I was fine with that. But as I started to grow and as I started to reach new heights and started to have bigger goals and stuff like that, that number had to go up. Like, I probably, what is a DJ Khaled or Fat Joe or one of these guys say? Oh, Yesterday's price. <laughs> he says another one. He says another one. But he says, yesterday's price is not today's price, right? Like what I was charging back then or what I was okay with back then is not what I'm okay with now because I'm at a different level. So if you want to level up, you got to now start setting certain standards for yourself, right? And so the only way your, your income is going to go up is if you start raising the bar. And the only way to raise the bar is to first, you got to set a bar. So if you don't have a bar, that's step one, set a bar, right? Operate your business that way. Anytime you're going to do a deal, you know, it's a small deal, big deal, whatever, like do the math and have that in your mind and make a business decision if that deal makes sense to you, right? Um, next concept. Feel free to stop me, guys, and ask any questions or comments. Um, all revenue adds up. That's another thing that some people forget, right? Sometimes they're trying to get too picky. Oh, I'm not going to work with the buyer because whatever. I'm not going to work with the seller. Or I'm not going to do this deal over here because what they're doing is the ego starts coming into play and like, oh, that's beneath me or whatever. But I'm like, hey, what else do you got in your pipeline? What do you got in the pipe? I got this one little deal. I got this big deal. I got this referral. I got this Zillow deal where Zillow is going to take part of my commission. Well, hey, all that shit's going to add up. And what's your net income at the end of the month? Is that within the threshold of what you're trying to do for your business goals? So it all adds up, guys, right? It's the same thing like why we start a team, right? Like, of course, I could take all the Zillow Flex deals for myself and I could try to close them all myself and not pay anybody or not share the commissions with anybody. But that would be stupid of me, right? Like the reason I can do a lot more with a lot more people with leverage, right? And maybe I'm making less, but the total adds up to more, right? So you got to think of your business like that as well. Like I can do this deal with another agent. Yeah, we're going to split the deal. But if that's going to make me 5K net on that one, and then I got my other deal, that's going to make me 15 grand because that's only my own deal. That's 20 grand a month right there. And so sometimes we're passing up deals or we're skipping or they're beneath us or whatever because we're not taking into account that it all adds up to the bottom line, right? And for you to become wealthy and for you to have a lot of income, you need to have revenue coming in all the time, right? Having a month with zero deals, that's bad for business. Having them because, right, having a month with at least one deal where you made three grand, that's better than a zero month. Would you agree? Right? Then maybe the next month you made 20 grand and you average those two, you made 23 grand in two months divided by two. You have your average there, right? And I think to add to that, that revenue, where even if it's a small deal, it gets you into the room with their SOI, right? Gets Correct. Into that, that, that's the other part of the business. Yeah, I might make three thousand on this deal, but whoever they refer me, that that's where I'm going to make some more opportunity, right? And I and I have prime examples of that. I just did a loan today. The guy called me, gave me a referral. It was a small deal, three hundred thousand dollar loan. He referred me another one for for I think it was like eight hundred and fifty thousand. There you go. Right? And that was, I just met the guy within the last, been talking, dealing with it the last three weeks. Yeah. I like that you pointed that out, right? We're in a volume game, right? We're in a, like, in the course of your career, it's better to have more clients that you've helped because more clients leads to more referrals, leads to more five star reviews, leads to more positive experience, leads to building your network, leads to repeat business, right? Even those deals that you're like, eh, like, cause some people, like, some people have an attitude about, like, referral fees and Zillow or smaller deals, but you're forgetting that the big picture is I want them all, right? Because even that deal that I paid Zillow on, they okay, they took 40, whatever, 30, 40%, whatever the fee is. And then I split that with my team. I didn't make as much as if I went and got that deal on my own, but now that guy referred me to other people. And we have many, many examples. I have Blanca's a living proof of many, many examples where she got one deal and then that turned into like millions of dollars of uh, volume in referral business where now we're not paying a referral fee on those ones. But had she not taken that initial deal, she would have closed off opening it up to those other ones, right? And just kind of going into that. I mean, the way I look at it, guys, I'm going to work your way. I'm going to be here for 40 hours. So, even, you know, yeah, I would love to only do the $3 million deals, 
like shit, why, why not do a $300, $400,000? You're here anyways. You're here anyways. You're here yeah. anyways. Go, go to work, right? I mean, that, that's, that's kind of the way I look at those, those, those opportunities. Okay, let's keep it going, guys. Um, really on the first slide, we got a few more. The last one, collect as much as possible, right? Sounds simple. Like we're we're in business to make profit, guys. Like that's just the bottom line, right? Don't sell yourself short. Go out there and collect as much as possible. Or another way to say it is collect as much as available, right? Collect as much commission that is available on the table. And that's gonna be different for every client, right? If you go meet with a seller and they're interviewing five agents, there may not be as much commission available right as if it's a seller that's like a referral and they're only talking to you it's a little bit different right because you're kind of setting your fee and they may not be shopping you around but the guy shopping around with five deal for five different agents commission's probably going to be a factor so i may not be able to get like the top top commission on that one but i may be able to get something that's within my in my standard because i've done the math right and i get another deal and i get another happy client right and so you got to just understand who you're dealing with and try to collect as much as possible. So on some of them, when you know you can make more money, like try to make more money. As long as you know in your mind and your heart that you are delivering tremendous value to this client, it's okay to get paid really well. Now, if you're doing a bad job and you know you're just you're you're not a good agent, you're not doing a good job for these clients, you're not really servicing them, and then you're still trying to demand a higher fee, okay, you're out of alignment, right? But I can say all of us in this room, like we really go to bat and go the extra mile for our clients. And we really want to make sure we deliver a great experience. And that experience comes with you being rewarded handsomely, right? As handsomely as possible. <laughs> all right. Get your money, guys. All right. Okay. Next part of this, guys. You got to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then you're like dead in the water, right? And I get this so many times, like newer agents, right? Like, hey, I'm closing a deal. I don't know what my split is. That's like getting hired at a job and going and working 40 hours a week and you don't know how much you're getting paid hourly. So if you don't know your numbers because you haven't taken the time to like look at the, remember what we talked about or, or when you sign, keep in mind, everybody on our team and pretty much any organization I would say the majority of them signs a contract saying, this is my split. This is what I get. But then for some reason, a lot of agents just get amnesia and then they don't know what their split is and they thought it was something else. And then they are like, here's the contract, right? It's just like your client, you sign a listing agreement at the end, your client goes, oh, what are you charging me again? Oh, I thought it was this. You all know, Mr. Client, it's on the contract. I'm charging you. 10%, right? <laughs> Whatever it might be. So it's the same thing here. Guys, you got to know your numbers, right? If you, if you don't know what your splits are, then how can you know, like, know the math? Um, so you got to know your splits. You got to know your costs on deals, right? Like if it's a listing, there's marketing costs, right? There's staging, there's home inspections. There's a lot of things that are part of the transaction where some of us have no clue, right? So it's up to you as the business owner. Remember in the first slide, you're a business owner. You got to take the time to, to understand the costs of the business, right? Just like us. I know how much this office costs every single month. So when I'm telling you to turn the AC down, it's because I know how much it costs, right? <laughs> because I'm a business owner, right? And I know just simple, the less I spend and the more I earn, the more profit I make, right? But if you don't know what you're spending on each deal, meaning how much is going to other people, how much is going to the company, how much is going to costs and fees, all those different things, like you're not really running your business at a high level, right? Um, know the simple math, guys. There should be a simple math equation you can do in your head. Really quick, I'm just going to throw it out there, okay? If I got a million dollar deal and I'm earning 3% on my commission, how much gross commission is that? 30,000. Did anybody not know that number? It's okay if you didn't, if you're like, uh, I didn't know that number. Simple math, right? A million times 3%. But if you don't, your phone has a calculator, guys, right? Like, serious. Some of us don't, aren't as good as numbers, right? It's just, it's just, that's just life, right? Some of us are better at writing, reading, whatever, but maybe we're not the numbers person. But the great thing is we have all the tools now, right? So you can easily punch that in the calculator 
or have a resource that you can go to and be able to do the math, right? Um, but you got to know the simple math. Hey, this is a million dollar client, 3% is my buyer broker agreement. That's a $30,000 commission on this particular deal. I'm going to probably take home 50% of that. So how much are you taking home on that? 15K, right? That's simple math that you could do in your head right there, right when you're meeting with the client, right? Now, let me give you another one. A million dollar listing, you're charging 3%, but there's 5K in costs. So what's the gross commission? 25 after your costs. And if you're taking home 50% of that, I'm just using round numbers, 50% of that, 12 and a half, right? So this deal, if I sign this deal, that's a 12 and a half dollars, 12,500 in my pocket. So you have to be able to just do the quick math because then when you're going out there and you're meeting with clients and you're trying to negotiate or you're wondering what fee I should charge, if you don't know the simple math guys, then you're not gonna be able to really navigate that conversation, right? And so remember, I'm speaking to everybody, but for some of you guys, like this may be an area you need to sit down and study a little bit, right? Some of us may be like, yeah, I know this. This is easy. Um, any questions so far? Okay. You got to have a goal, guys, for total revenue. Because this kind of talks about what we talked about in the first slide. But, right, if you don't have a goal every month, then how do you know if, like, your efforts are being directed in the right place? So everyone needs to have a goal in the month for how much they need to bring home, how much revenue they need to bring home. And they need to know how to work those numbers, right? What do the what does that mean in terms of deals? So if I want to make ten thousand dollars a month, and I'm at a fifty percent split, I'll just give you an example. That means I need to bring in twenty thousand a month of gross commission. And I can do the math. If I'm charging two percent or three percent, you can figure out. Okay, that would mean I need to at least close a one one million dollar deal every month at two percent. Now, what if I'm not closing million dollar deal? Well, that's two five hundred thousand dollar deals equal a million, or a seven fifty and a two fifty in Stockton, right? That equals a million, right? Or the volume, right? So you have to know like what your numbers mean, right? So that you can hit your goals. If you don't know what your numbers mean, then we're just like going through the day by default, right? We're getting pulled in all these different directions, and we're not really making business decisions. <laughs> Uh, and then having a minimum standard. We already talked about that. What's your minimum standard on each deal, right? For it to be in line, you know your own capabilities, you know how much you want to work, how much effort you're putting in, how much you want to bring home. You have to have that math. And what I would do is I would have these numbers calculated. I would write them down somewhere and I would obsess over these numbers, guys, because whatever you give attention to and whatever you focus on and whatever you obsess about, what happens to it? It comes to reality, right? It expands. If every day I'm thinking about getting swole, getting ripped in the gym, and all I think about is my diet and my workouts and my numbers, and I'm jotting down my, my reps and my lifts and all that stuff, like over time, I'm going to get in shape, guys. Like if I'm like really focused on that in your business, if I'm like obsessing over, okay, I need, I need, two deals in contract i need four million in volume because that four million in volume at an average of two and a half percent that's going to give me this much gross commission times my split i'm going to make 25 grand a month and 25 grand a month i'm crushing it i'm killing it i can have my goals that needs to be in front of me at all times because when i come into the office to make my calls i'm not just making calls to set appointments blindly i have an actual number that i'm chasing and that i'm going after and we want to talk about how to get motivated right you got to have goals to get motivated. You don't know why you're in here. I'm in here because Jason and Enrique say show up every day and make calls. No, you got to be in here because it's attached to a, some sort of goal, a financial goal. And so the more you can become obsessed about your financial goals and know your numbers, the more that you're going to take the actions because you're constantly reminded like, hey, this is what I got to work after today. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Questions, questions, questions. All right, let's get into some uh, strategy with uh, these clients. Think in your mind right now, guys, what is your value to a buyer or a seller, right? Because remember, we talked about in the absence of value, it's always about price. So if I want to earn more commission, I need to make sure I bring value. 
And in order to bring value, I need to understand what is valuable. Follow me? So if I'm working with a buyer, and this is a quiz for you guys, who can give me three bullet points right now, just three, three bullet points of the value that you bring to a buyer in a transaction and how that's helpful to them? Who got three bullet, three bullet points? Why someone would want to work with you as a buyer in today's market, if you had to break that down into three reasons why, what would it be? to uh, negotiate the best price for, for the property and like that. Okay. And navigate them through the whole process. Okay. So one and three were kind of similar. You said educate them on the market, right? You said try to negotiate the best price in terms, right? And then the last one was walk them through the process, educate them on the process. Okay. So right there, that's solid, really solid. And so this comes to where you're formulating your value proposition, right? When I meet with the buyer, what is the value that I bring to a buyer? Always be able to summarize that in three points. Because then when you're meeting with people, these are three points that you can always come back to, right? This becomes part of your recipe. This becomes part of your standard of service. This becomes part of the value that you get from working with me. This could become part of your marketing plan. This become can be part of your brand and how you promote yourself on social media, right? Like. If what you stand for is, hey, when I work with buyers, I educate them, education. Let's even simplify it. My value is education. When you work with me as a buyer, you are going to get educated. Number two, my value is negotiations. I'm going to get you the best price, the best terms for your specific situation. And I'm going to make up a third one. And my last one is going to be fun, right? When you work with me, yeah, fun because that's unique, right? Think about it this way. You're laughing, but that's because it worked, right? It worked because you were expecting me to say like something that was going to be fun. Hey guys, and I promise when you work with me, we're going to have a lot of fun because buying a home is stressful, but when we're out there shopping together, guys, I'm going to give you the high level service. We're going to have fun. It's going to be a smooth experience, right? When you're done, you're going to be at the front door holding that sign with your keys in your hand, and we're going to be taking that picture and you're going to be a happy camper. Right? So you guys can rip that off if you want, right? What, what I what I like what Enrique did, guys, is that everyone it's like it's like when you guys go to listen, everyone does stage and everyone does photography. Right. So what Enrique did was he said he did you know what everyone does, and then he added some flavor, some character behind that. Right. Yep. So I, I, I encourage you guys, whatever your like you said, rip his off, but I like that idea of like, yeah, everyone's gonna walk you not not, not again, everyone walk you through the process, you know, have tons of experience. I can negotiate, right? I think those need to be said. Yeah. But I like that he, he tied it down, like, and you know what? You're going to get this special personality, which is going to be fun or whatever, maybe. You know, I think that's important for you guys to find that uniqueness. Yep. So, education, negotiation, and fun, right? Yeah. Still that, write that down, right? I just came up with that on the fly. But if I'm thinking like to a buyer and I'm out there talking to buyers, that could be my whole motto going forward for my business. That could be how I talk to every single buyer. Hey, what's unique about me and the reason you want to work with me is this is what I stand for in my business. When I work with buyers, I'm going to educate them, right? And you explain how you're going to educate them. I'm going to negotiate. You explain what that means and why it's valuable. And most of all, we're going to have fun together, guys. Yep. And that could be like how I pitch every single buyer. That Now I'm formulating what's called a value proposition. And when they go meet with somebody else, I guarantee you he's not saying fun. I just differentiated myself from the crowd, right? And so you have to know what your value is. We could do the same thing with sellers, right? Same thing with sellers is what would your value be to a seller? For time, we're gonna, we're gonna keep running through this, but it's the same exercise, right? Is when I meet with the seller, what do I wanna stand for when I meet with the seller? Because I'm creating value, I'm creating separation, right? And there is no price that you can put on that. So when I'm charging you two and a half, three percent, four percent, whatever you decide to charge, it's because you're getting all of that, you're getting all of this, right? Um, yeah. So, 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 I, so what he just did was something that I, that I call the magician, right? And, and let me explain something else. When, when the, the average, I think, uh, like entry level agent, that sales, salesperson, when they're talking about value, they think that it's it's it, this, this, and this. You turn yourself into a commodity. When you turn yourself into a commodity, you now there, there's no value 
that perceives. So what happens is the only thing that they can attack at that point is going to be price, yep. right? So when you talk about it more like a magician, which is exactly what Enrique just did, when you talk less about commodities and more about the experience, uh, and Alex Ramosi says it, don't uh, 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 sell the vacation, don't sell the trip, right? Yeah. So so that's the difference between a magician and the donkey, right? Is if you if you talk more like a magician and you create this whole environment where they can see it, right? That right there will separate you because everyone talking commodities. I do this, I do this, I do yeah. this. Yeah. And if everybody is doing that, then what happens, the only thing they can attack at that point is price. It's the price. Right? So try to be yourself as much away as you can from being the commodity and sell the vacation, but don't sell the trip. Yeah. Plain, right? They'll sell the plane ride, right? The plane ride, right? When you're going, what Rob said is, is exactly true, right? Is you want to sell the vacation versus the plane ride. I'm repeating this so people, because I'm recording this. Um, and so, because, right, trying to go on vacation is stressful, right? You got to pack, you got to shop, you got to get there early, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But once you get there, it was worth it, right? So you want to sell the vacation. You want to sell the experience. You want to sell what it's going to be like to actually participate in this and do all this stuff. You don't want to necessarily sell all the million steps it takes to, make a vacation happen right and so that that's all part of the formula when you're coming up with your value proposition so the homework for you guys is you need to figure out what do you stand for now that doesn't mean this can't evolve over time but you need to have something don't go out there with nothing right and that becomes part of your scripting that becomes part of your your negotiations that becomes part of your rebuttaling and all this stuff and then you pull that out and so the next part of it is you need to be able to articulate your value with stories and examples, right? Because it's one thing for me to say how much fun you're going to have. But if I tell you a story about how much fun we had, it's a lot more impactful, right? If I tell you a story about how I educate, let's go back to my, my three values is education, negotiation, and fun. If I sit there and tell you a story about how I educated a client and it really, really helped them, hey, Mr. Customer, you know, I know we're getting to know each other. Let me tell you a little example of how I educated my last client, right? When he came to me, he was a first time buyer. He had no clue about even how to apply for credit, about, you know, how to get his taxes in order. He was self-employed, right? He made good money, he had good credit, but he didn't know where to start, right? So what we did is we started off with a buyer consultation. And in that consultation, we did boom, 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 right? By the end of that consultation, he was now informed. And now he was able to take the next steps and I hooked him up on my lender, my lender got him approved, right? Lo and behold, he had a couple things on his credit that he had to fix that he didn't know about. We were able to get those fixed for him, right? We went through this whole process. We negotiated him a good deal. He initially was going, you know, he got a $50,000 reduction or a credit or for closing costs, or he got all the fees covered. And now I just gave him the keys last month, right? And I'm happy to show you, this is actually a picture of my client. And I bust out the picture. This is him holding the thing. We had a lot of fun in this process, right? Like we, after we went and showed homes, we'd always go to lunch, right? He likes this little Asian spot down the street. You know, they have really good uh, Kung Pao chicken, right? And so you guys see how I just sold you guys on a story right there? Right? And so if I'm meeting with you and presenting to you, I'm like, damn, like this is way different than like that other guy who was just trying to get me to sign this agreement, right? exactly right and this is where you got to be able to sell this right and you guys all have examples you don't have to be brand new and the examples don't have to be yours yeah. right if you're brand new what i'm saying is if you don't think you have the examples they don't have to be yours let me rephrase that right mm -hmm. you can have examples of what has happened on the team you can have an example like let's say you haven't closed a deal but you've showed a lot of homes and you've done a lot of consults you can talk about that but the key is you have to be able to articulate it. I mean, you have to be able to explain it like I am, and you have to really be confident, and there has to be conviction. Who knows what conviction means? Conviction means belief. When I speak, do I believe what I'm saying? Let me ask you guys, as I'm presenting right now, do you guys believe what I'm saying? Why do you believe what I'm saying? Because of my conviction, because the way I'm saying it, right? Because I'm saying it in such a way where you know that I believe this, so then you believe me because I believe it, right? That's conviction. And so you need to be able to say these things with conviction, with energy, with tone, because that elicits emotion. And when people feel good with the emotions, they're gonna wanna pay you more <laughs> for the right reasons, right?
I think value, I think value plays like a big, big role in, in it, and, but how to explain value is really, really important. So I would definitely end up uh, uh, focusing on value. The, 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 here's, here's another example of the way that I've also heard it is you look at your phones, right? You talk to an engineer, they'll tell you the, the geeky way of how a phone works. The majority of people don't care about the geeky stuff. They just know, they just want to know that it works or have it, the, the gist of it, right? As salespeople, we give the gist of it, not the not the other stuff, not the not the not the high tech. Now, is there going to be people that are going to want the dirty stuff? Yes, there is, right? But I would probably say, from my experience, the majority of people just want to know what uh, the gist of it. Same thing. Can you fix that problem? Yes, I can. Great. That's that's what they want to know. So you're selling them the vision that you have the confidence and the ability to get them exactly what they want. They yep. really don't care too much of the details that are involved in it. Yeah. Absolutely, guys. Um, okay, next one here. Does your value outweigh your fee, right? It all comes back to what we just explained, right? If I'm giving a tremendous amount of value and I say, okay, for the fee that I'm paying, I get all of this because the way it was explained, articulated, conviction, everything that we talked about, the three points, the value proposition, the stories, and all those things. Then in my mind, I start to say, well, hey, it's worth it, right? Um, and so in the absence of value, it's always about price, give more value, right? Follow these steps. Um, the last thing guys is just to, I always want you to remember that your unique value is always going to be you, right? Because, and you should not try to fight a different battle. Give you an example is I went to a listing appointment recently and I started going over, you know, our presentation and what we offered and a different list of, uh, options and fees and stuff like that. And the client was just stuck on, oh, that's how much you charge. And like, you guys charge that much. And, you know, that includes staging or it doesn't include staging. Somebody else, you know, uh, was charging less and they were including this and all this stuff. Right. And so for them, what they were focusing on was just really the commodities and the services. Right. And what I what I had to say, because if I were to try to fight the battle of like who's offering more, that's a losing battle. Right. Well, I offer my staging is better than their staging, right? Okay, that's you can't win that fight, right? Yeah. And so what I said is, hey, like I heard her out. I said, hey, I, you're totally right. Everybody offers this stuff, right? This is kind of the standard nowadays. If you're not offering this, then you're not even at the table, right? I go, but what you don't get in all of this is you don't get me. So if you go with that guy, you're not getting me. And here's why you want to go with me. And then I started selling her on my experience, how long I've been in the business. I started articulating my value. I started giving her examples of how I've uh, earned more sellers money. I even gave an example of a recent sale in their neighborhood that we submitted an offer on and how that agent didn't come through and really negotiate and left $60,000 on the table, right? And I started going into stories and explaining that. And I said, hey, look, at you got to decide, right? Like I, I brought the analogy of golf, right? I go, everybody knows who Tiger Woods is, most famous golf player out there, right? I play golf too. I go, but I'm not as good as Tiger Woods. I go, you can give Tiger Woods the same exact golf club. He can use my clubs and he'll do a lot more with my clubs, right? The same clubs. I go, you can give any agent a real estate sign and go put a sign in front of the yard. I go, I'm just the Tiger Woods when it comes to real estate. I'm going to do a lot more with that sign, right? Because of the value I bring because of all these different things. And so by me painting that story, now she was like, she apologized, right, <laughs> for like bashing me, right? She was trying to bash us on the fees and stuff like that. Um, but it changed her mindset where she was like, okay, like that's different, right? And a lot of agents are fighting a losing battle. They're just fighting services. They're just trying to compare services, right? And remember, it goes back to the race to the bottom, right? If, if all you have to do is compare services or staging and photos, anybody can do that. Then it becomes like who's cheaper, right? And so don't even fight that battle. You got to understand what value you bring to the table. You got to stand out. And the only way to do that is to tell them about you and why you're unique and why you are going to offer something different, something that you bring to the table. And some examples, right? If you're experienced, it could be your experience, your track record, your know-how, right? All these different things. How many times you've been through the finish line, right? If you're not that experienced, it could be like, hey, I'm newer, I'm younger, I'm hungrier. I'm going to work harder than that other guy who like, he's already been doing this for 20 years. He's tired. He's ready to retire. Like, no, like me, I'm giving, I'm going all in on your listing. 
right? And you paint that. Let me give you an example. Last night, I was in the office till 10 p.m. making calls for one of my sellers, right? I'll, or for one of my buyers or whatever it might be. And so now you can start selling against that and you can, you can sell what's unique about you. You guys follow me? That's not that. All right. But there's one thing that you get in there saying, a lot of these agents, when they're selling commodities, the majority of agents sell commodities. So when, when they're going in there, they think that by them saying these commodities, that they're the big shit, that they're, they're the greatest. But I want you to understand the words that Kika said. Kika said, Mr. Customer, you're impressed with that? That's standard. If you're, if you're coming to the table with that right there, that's standard. Let me tell you why you want to hire someone like me. Yeah. You see what I mean? You see how he was able to take what everybody says, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and, and put it and, and kind of downplay it. And then he was able to add to that. Yeah. That is value right there. That's value. None of this other bullshit that happened, the staging, none of that stuff matters. It's the other stuff that happens. Yeah. Right. After we went through that dialogue right there, guys, the client wasn't even talking about staging their photos or anything. It was like that was like an auto response, right? They didn't really care about that, right? It was now like focused like on what am I gonna do to help get their home sold, right? Me personally, not like what was my stager gonna do, right? Stager's not gonna sell the house. Um and so I got them shifted from like commodities to now like value proposition, right? Put me up against any other realtor, right? That's the game you want to play. The other thing is that's not even measurable, guys. Remember that. There's no way to measure that as an agent, right? It's like, hey, listen, I'm a better agent. I can negotiate better. I can do that. There's nothing now that the other point that they can, that they can check me you on say, and say, well, wait a minute. You know what I mean? You now become something that's not arguable. Yeah, at that point. yeah. exactly. Okay, guys. Um, last slide here, I believe. Yes. Negotiation strategies. Right, I'm coming in right on time. Um, okay. So these are some strategies, right? Cause some of us, the reason this training got brought up is some of us are going out there. We're meeting with sellers. They're trying to negotiate. We're meeting with buyers. They don't, they're trying to negotiate our buyer agreement, stuff like that. So here's the thing is if you didn't do any of the stuff in the beginning, you're already like losing, right? So to negotiate, right. To get better at negotiation, it's a combination of stacking all of those strategies and tactics that we talked about. There's not just one script or one tactic that gets someone to automatically want to pay you 1% more. It's all of them. It it's all of them. It takes all of that. It's when you start layering them and layering them. And then at the end, they're like, okay, the, my perceived, your perceived value you're giving me like, okay, this is why you're worth more. It wasn't one thing, right? It's like, um, let me give you an example. It's like if you're in a relationship with somebody, right? Your good looks can only go so far, right? Like maybe you got together because of the good looks. I don't know, right? But then they start realizing who you are and hopefully that's good, right? And then, but what I'm saying is, is if someone's in a relationship and like, okay, it was all about the looks. Well, after a while, like I've seen you every day, the looks, right? It's like, yeah, all right, you still look the same, right? But when you start measuring like the care, the support, the, all these different things, and those start adding up, then it's no longer just about the looks. It's about the looks, probably one of them, right? It's about, it becomes less about the looks, in, in fact, right? That's why you see some people with ugly people, right? <laughs> I'm just playing, right? <laughs> remember, this is, part of, this is part of my strategy though, right? I want you guys to remember, when I say funny things like this, it's so that you guys pay attention, right? It's part of selling the story. But what happens is it becomes less about looks and it come, becomes about the total package that you bring to the table. It's the same thing with an agent, right? It becomes less about your stats, right? Or what company you're with or how many sales you close or whatever, right? That's the analogy that I want to relate to. And it becomes about the total package that you bring to the table for that client, right? The stats is probably one thing, the, you know, your track record, but then the negotiations, the care, the fund, all those things. And in turn, now you're a great agent in my eyes, right? And I would pay for that. I would pay more for that. So that's why it takes everything that we've talked about. And like, when you know these negotiation strategies, these will help out as well, right? So if you're gonna negotiate with someone, so let's say you've done all of that, right? This is the scenario, you've done all of that. And now there's trying to negotiate the commission, right? You need to isolate and understand what their concerns are. That's number one. This is a simple strategy, right? Hey, can you, um, hey, you know, I, I love it. 
you know, Blanca, everything you said, you're great. Obviously, I could tell you know what you're doing. I just, it feels really good. But, you know, like you're charging 3% and the other guy's charging two and a half. You know, that's a half a percent on a million dollar deal. That's, you know, it's a lot of money. You know, I'm first time buyer. I don't have a lot of money, right? And so I'd love to go with you, but, you know, the other person's a little bit cheaper, right? And so your job is to isolate that. Hey, Mr. Customer, I totally understand. Let me ask you, is that the only thing that's a concern for you right now, right? Is it just kind of the price, you know, or do you see like the different value that I bring, right? My education that I'm going to bring to the table, the negotiations, the fun that we're going to have, like, is all that in line with what you're looking for in an agent, right? Did everything I talk about, do you see how I'm going to be able to help you and do a, do a really good job for you? Yes. Okay. So the only thing we're talking about now here is just the, the commission part. Am I correct? Yes. It's the only thing we're talking about. Okay. That's an example of isolating. And the only way to find that out is to have this conversation just like ask, that. Ask the questions. Yeah. Ask the questions. Is there anything else besides this that, you know, you're hesitating on or would stop us from moving forward? Okay. Question? Wouldn't you want to ask them what services the other agent's going to provide? And no. Say that's a standard? The question was, wouldn't you want to ask what services another agent provides? Remember, you want to talk less about other agents as much as possible because how you talk about other agents, right, is a reflection on you. Like if someone like, what do you think about people who gossip about other people all the time? You're like, well, what are they saying about me when I'm not around, right? Like, <laughs> so unless you're like giving a clear cut example, like I gave an example of like how there was a home that sold in her neighborhood and like this is what happened that was facts right but just to like say like oh don't go with them that company sucks like all this stuff what service oh yeah their staging's cheap you don't want to go with them anyways right like stuff like that that I, that actually works that actually works against you right but it's a good question um and so you got to isolate and understand the concerns it's it's all about the, the 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 price right and what we're really talking about guys is we're talking about half a percent here mr customer John, you know, what we're talking about is talking about half a percent. And if we had to relate that to is in numbers, half a percent on $1 million is how much? 5,000. 5, so what we're really talking about, John, right now is $5,000 in costs, right? And so let me ask you this, John, is it really about the $5,000? Because I know you have a budget and you have money put aside for all this, right? I'm assuming you're not buying a home and you don't have any money, right? You know, your lender already pre-approved you, stuff like that. Or is it really that you just want to make sure you get the best deal possible on this one? Because when someone is, is trying to negotiate on fees, what do they really mean? So that goes to point number two, understand what they really want. Is it that just they, hey, John, do you just not like me and you want me to get paid less? Or is it just that you want to make sure you're getting the absolute best deal when you buy your home? And ask them that. And I bet you'll laugh. No, no, I like you, right? Sorry, I don't mean to offend you, right? Okay, I just want to be clear. Did I do something wrong? Like, is it just you don't think I'm worth, you know, what I charge? Yeah, put their guard down. No, it's just, you know, we're on a budget. And we're just trying to get the best deal possible. Hey, I totally respect that. I would be doing the same thing, right? So what I'm really hearing, you just want to make sure you get the best deal possible. And then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to show them how I'm going to get them the best deal possible. I'm going to give them examples. Hey, look at, let me give you an example of how I got my client a really good deal, right? I had other clients that thought the same thing. This last client I work with, right? My fee is typically 3%. They had the same concern. They had interviewed other agents. Some agents were charging less, but they decided to take a chance on me. I ended up getting all of those costs paid for by the seller. And I worked with their lender and we got other credits towards their closing costs and we got their interest rate bought down on a two one buy down and it went from 6% and now they're only paying 4% for the first year, 5% in the second year. And it looks like they're gonna refinance soon because the rates are going down. You know, so I totally hear your concern, but if I can get all of that paid for and wrapped up into the deal and you know at the end that you're getting the best deal possible, would that be fair, right? So I'm finding out what they want. I'm giving them an example. I'm giving them a story. I'm painting it in a picture we're like, hey, if this, then that, and then I put it back on them, right? And what you can do is a step, the next step is you can use risk reversal to put people at ease. Who knows what risk reversal means? What does risk reversal mean? Anybody know what risk reversal means? Did you just do it when you're saying like, I, I, I would be 
the same position as you if you were power buying to you're basically understanding what their concern is and, and consolidating to like you know agree with that. So no, that, that's a good answer, but that that's not what I'm looking for. Risk reversal, guys, is offering something to them to take away the risk. Because what's the risk? Like if I pay you more, let's say in this scenario, Blanca, I'm going to pay you half a percent more. Okay, let's say I go through with that. What are my risks of me paying you half a percent more? Less money in my pocket. But what if you did a great job? What if you did a great job and you got all the fees paid for? Was there a risk there? Yeah. So the, oh. risk, the risk would be that, that you didn't comply with what you said initially that you were going to do. Exactly, right? So what Rob, exactly. So if I'm telling this person like, hey, John, if I can get all these paid for, even though my fee's a little bit higher, you see the service, you see the value, right? And I can guarantee all of this stuff for you. If I don't do that, then you don't have to move forward with the deal. Or you can cancel if you want to cancel and you don't owe me anything. So what that does is that takes away the risk from them because the risk I'm taking when I go with someone that's higher is that if they deliver, great. But if they don't deliver, I could have probably, in my mind, I could have went to someone a little bit cheaper and saved some money, right? So by introducing risk reversal, which is why we have like cancellation guarantees. Um, exactly. And there's a few, there's a few, uh, I went on chat GPT earlier. Let me see if I can share this. Uh, present something else. Chat GPT is your friend, guys. So, Mr. Chat GPT, what are 10 risk reversal strategies that agents can offer buyers and sellers? Easy exit listing agreement. Allow the seller to cancel anytime if they're not satisfied. Satisfaction guarantee. Hey, if you're not satisfied with the outcome at the end of this transaction, I will give you $1,000 back and I will put that in writing, right? or whatever, right? Buyback guarantee. If you don't like the house after this amount of time, we can get someone to buy it back or we can sell it for you for free guarantee. We use that risk reversal. Home warranty, right? We guarantee a home warranty for you. That's going to cover any cost. In case you got into the home, appliance breaks down, you got the home warranty covered. Pre-listing home inspection, guaranteed offer program, love it or leave it guarantee, post-sale, commission flexibility, right? So there's all these different tactics and strategies that you can use. Um, to put somebody at ease, to make them feel like, okay, if I enter into this agreement with you, if it doesn't go right, I have these things in place that are gonna protect me, right? It's why you hack a lot of companies offer satisfaction guarantee. A lot of co companies say cancel anytime, free trial for 14 days. If you don't like it, cancel, you don't pay anything, um, right? It doesn't say I'll buy your house if you can't sell it within 14 days, right? It sounds great. I mean, once you know how it works, right? But they, there's just so many of them, guys, and, and I would use it in your back pockets, right? Or that could be part of your value proposition. Now, here's here's um here's one risk reversal, like that you could just say, right? That's really easy. Is what I always tell clients when they're barking on commission, is hey, if you're not happy at the end of this, guys, I don't want I want I have 500 five star reviews online. I want you to be 501, and this is called like a satisfaction guarantee, right? This is basically what I'm explaining. If you're not happy with my service or you feel at the end of this that I didn't do my job or that, hey, that half a percent difference that we talked about, like you feel like you didn't get your money's worth, I will gladly sit down with you and I will have this conversation again and I will work something out with you. That's my guarantee to you, right? Because at the end of the day, my reputation's on the line. My reviews are on the line. I want to make sure that you refer me other clients. I want to make sure that you give me a five-star review. Is that fair, Mr. Customer? Nine times out of 10 guys, when you like, if you've built enough value and they like you and all that stuff, and you're just like, you're right there and you say that and you say it with conviction, they're going to move forward nine times out of 10. I mean, if he get picked up a listing in Evergreen, right? That he, if him and I went to a listing appointment and he said that same exact line, that was the, the one that sealed it. Yeah. Got a sign at 6%. That lead right there got me like four or five other listings around that area. Yeah. Because of that guarantee. Because of the guarantee. At the end, the lady said, well, I like your services. You know, I like what you're offering, but can you do it for five instead of six or whatever it was back then, right? And I said, I went through the whole the whole dialogue. And I said, hey, look, at it. I need this much because I need to be able to invest in market. I need to be able to, for me to give you the result that your neighbor got because they saw the neighbor, I need all my tools. And if I don't have all, 
enough compensation, I can't invest into these tools. I can't cover these costs of staging. I can't do all these things. I go, but I will guarantee that if you're not happy with this and we don't get you the results you're looking for, because we were really confident on what we can do. I said, I will gladly sit down with you and I will work with you on the commission. Is that fair? I said, okay, that's fair. Sign, right? But see, sometimes what we do is we go, okay, drop it to two and a half. I'll match it, right? And so that leads to the last, we're almost done guys. Two more points. Um, if you don't want to give away the house, right? Like let's say you did that back and forth, back and forth, and you're just coming to a standstill. What are my options now? Remember, think like a business owner. What are my options at that point? Is what? Just take it? Okay, so this is good. So if I've done everything we've talked about and we're down to the negotiation table and I'm at 3% and they're at two and a half and they're stuck on two and a half and they don't want to budge and they're not going to sign, right? And they're throwing their feet up and they're kicking, right? And screaming. What are my options? We well, have a few options, right? Tell them all what you're giving them and then ask. No, let's say you already them. sold them, right? You already sold them. No, but I mean, but ask, if, if I, at the end of the, the transaction, my service went beyond what you thought. Yeah. Okay. So that's one option is you can say, Hey, look it. Because Shri just said, just take it. Okay. That's one option, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. I want you to know you have options, choices, and alternatives, right? One option is just take it. All right. You got me, Mr. Buyer. You beat me, right? Take it two and a half. Let's go in the house. Let's do what we got to do, right? That's, that's only one option. The other option is, hey, how about this? We'll agree to the two and a half, but I still would like to earn the other half because honestly, this is less than what I normally charge. If after this transaction, you feel like I did a great job, would you be willing to compensate? And we got you the results and we got it all paid for and everything, beyond. Would be right? Beyond the results. Would you be okay with compensating me then? The additional what I'm worth. That's another option, right? Is is you put like a clause in the thing, right? Or the or you could do it backwards. Hey, look it. How about we do this? We'll put it at three, which is my fee. I will put it in writing. If you are not a hundred percent satisfied with my service, I will reduce my commission to two point five. And I'll put that in writing. I'll put that in the contract. And at the end, we'll have this conversation, and we cross that bridge when we get there. This way. This way I don't lose and you don't lose. Is that fair, Mr. Client? So that's another option, right? There's another option. What's another option? Your systems, there's- well, Let's go, examples. Let's not just throw them out there. Give me another example. Give me a so, uh, I'm specific. Give me, if you make a million dollars, I'll pay you this. If you make a million- Well, in this scenario, in this scenario, we're working with the buyer, you're at 3%, they're at two and a half. Right, your half a percent is what we're talking about, right? What's another option that we that we could throw out? Just walk. You could walk. That is an option, guys. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm adamant. Like it's not worth it. I did the math already. Remember, don't just walk if you didn't do the math, right? <laughs> Remember, I did the math and I did the math, and you know what? Based off like the the dollar amount on this deal and what it's going to pay and all that stuff, it's just not worth it for me, yeah. right? So that's an option. Right, hold on, we got to we got to wrap up, guys. We're already over time. Um, that's an option is to walk away. You can th you can say no to the business. I would say that should be the last option, right? Because you probably should have did the math before you went out there, right? Or at least had the quick math. Okay. Here's another option. What's another option, guys? You guys are missing like the most. <laughs> well. <laughs> I like this is a good conversation. There's another option. There's like the most clearest one that you guys are avoiding, right? That you guys are missing. What's the other option? You're at three. He's at two and a half. Meet in the middle. Meet in the middle, right? Remember, you don't have to drop your commission a full percentage, right? The other thing I wrote, don't give away the house, right? You can also negotiate in dollars. Hey, how about this? Look at. I'm typically at three. I know you're looking for two and a half. I've just, my services with everything I'm going to do. But what I'm willing to do is I'm willing to give you, and you already crunched the numbers, I'm willing to give you a $1,000 discount. Uh, I like that. I don't know right? That. Because a $1,000 discount is probably only like 0.125%. But in the client's mind, what did they get? They won. 
Because what you got to remember, guys, at this last point here, what you got to remember is the last point. Please say it out loud. One more time. Everybody together. It's nothing against you, right? But some people will always negotiate. Sometimes it's just the personality. Sometimes it's a cultural thing. Sometimes it's a, it could be a multitude of things, guys, right? Like some people just like, they always want to get the best deal. There's some people that they just want to see what they could get, right? <laughs> I've had clients like that. I don't like those clients, right? Where I could tell like, let me just see if I can get you lower, right? Like, <laughs> my dad's a negotiator, right? <laughs> Shout out to my dad if he watches this. But here's the thing, guys, is right. All is fair in business, guys, right? You cannot get your emotions involved in this. You cannot lose your composure, right? We're wrapping up here. We cannot lose your composure. You cannot get your emotions involved. It's not personal, guys. If someone wants to negotiate with you, it isn't because you're less of a person or less of an agent. It could be that they, they got their reasons, yeah. right? They got their reasons. And sometimes that's a good client for you. Sometimes it's not a good client for you. Sometimes that's a, a warning sign of what's going to happen when you guys do business, right? We want to do business with realistic, level-headed people who are willing to cooperate and stuff like that, right? It's not always like that. And so, so remember, yeah. you have to make business decisions, right? And so you can negotiate. You can meet in the middle. You can walk away. You can say, hey, how about we put this in writing? If this, then that, which I like that style because I'm so I'm trying to get my commission no matter what because I know that's what I'm worth, right? But remember, you don't always have to just give away the house. And that's what a lot of agents default to. Okay, fine. Okay, fine means like, I gave up, I submit, right? But what are you showing to the client? Your negotiation skills are weak. And I just told my client that my three value points were education, negotiation, and fun. Well, guess what? I just showed I'm not a good negotiator. Because if I was willing to drop my fees just like that, what am I going to do when it's time to negotiate on your behalf? And that's a line you can say, hey, Mr. Client, I told you my skill set was negotiation. That was one of the values. That's why you want to work with me. If I just drop my commission, I don't stand up for what I'm worth. How am I going to go stand up for your money when it's time to submit the offer? Yes. Right? Yes. And that so what I, right what I don't want to do, Mr. Client, is I don't want to start off our relationship with me just dropping fees because that's not how I work. Right? But I do understand your concern. Right? I put myself in your shoes. There's other people who offer less. I can't speak for them. All I can speak is for what I bring to the table. And you can tell through my conviction that I'm going to do a great job for you. So why don't we do this? Why don't we put it in writing? If you're not 100% satisfied with this process, I'll put that in writing in the contract. I will go down to 2.5. That's the story. That's the vacation. Gonna... And then you stay quiet. And then you stay quiet and you say, is that fair? Right? And my, 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 thing, yeah. my, my biggest, my biggest takeaway is one thing is this guy's his confidence, yeah. right? His confidence and Enrique is willing to have those uncomfortable conversations. Those uncomfortable conversations come with asking those questions, yeah. isolating, understanding, right? And I think that that's that's a big takeaway for me watching this training is that one is definitely his confidence. Two is he's 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 ready for those uncomfortable conversations, right? We already know they're going to negotiate. Any yeah. one of your clients is going to negotiate. So why not be prepared, be confident, and be able to have those uncomfortable conversations? Yeah. I think it's huge. I was going to bring that up as well too. Remember, uh, is, is, is the biggest thing is having the is asking that initial uncomfortable yeah. conversation. Yeah. That is a hard part that a lot of people want to avoid, and it's not it, it's not out of your control. It's going to take a lot of practice. It's going to require you to really just throw it out there and then stay quiet and then hear what they say and then fight that battle. So, so we asked you guys, those are all great points, guys. Thanks for, for contributing. We asked you guys in the beginning, right? This is what I'm, wrap, I'm leaving you off with, is who wants to earn more commission, right? Everybody said I do, right? Everyone raised their hand, right? Are you willing to do what it takes to earn more commission? Yeah. Are you willing to learn how to be a negotiator? How do you become a better negotiator? Practice. Meaning when you go on your next appointment, you need to implement this stuff. You need to have those uncomfortable conversations. And those that you can't role play with, then you just you do. Role play with each other, right? You need to have tools in your belt. You need to know that when someone wants a lower commission, my process is isolate, understand, 
give them some guarantees, risk reversal. Don't give it all away. I know that I have multiple options when I'm negotiating commission. I don't just have to drop to whatever fee they set. Remember, I set the fees in my business, not somebody else, right? And so I don't just have to drop and, and, and just throw my hands up, right? That shows weakness. Your license says what? what? What's your title when you get your license? Real estate salesperson. In sales, it's the art of language, it's the art of communication, it's the art of negotiation, right? This is what you signed up for. The better negotiator you are, the more commission that you're going to make, the more you're going to earn in the long run. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, guys, that's all I got for you guys. Let's pop it up.